You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another interesting episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Got an interesting show today. Happy to be with you. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. We do appreciate it, and we uh, appreciate all those of you who are members and take advantage of all the numerous, actually dozens of classes to help you make money with your drone. Frankly speaking, living the drone life is probably one of the best jobs out there. I mean, if you think about it, you get to go on adventures, you can turn any vacation into a business expense, and on top of that, you're out in nature, which is extremely healthy and probably will increase your vitamin D levels. So in case you're low on that, like most uh, uh, middle-aged men and women, well, you won't be deficient for long. That said, it is something that pushes you, but it's a lot of fun as well. So if you want to live the drone life, be sure to become a drone member at the droneu.com. Rob, you know, hand catches. This is what we're going to be talking about today. I've seen a lot of people uh, hand catching everything from a Mavic Mini to an Inspire 2 to an M600 to an M300. And some people do hand catches because they're cool, but there's actually a very practical reason to do hand catches. Yeah, several of them, I would imagine. Well, I right? mean, you think of a super windy day. Yeah. You think of action sports. You think of flying from a moving, you know, subject mm-hmm. in a sparsely populated area. There you go, FAA, wink, wink. <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> well, like the Phantom, those things, they're uh, they're very tip happy. They are. They are very tip happy. And you know what, DJI, you need to do the drone world a favor. Otherwise, I think you threaten your dominance globally. You have got to put out a new Phantom. Uh, you have got to do it. It's. I think that you will very quickly lose your dominance by ditching that drone, but that's just my personal opinion. I say that because now we've mapped with the uh, the H30 T and N and um, woof. That's all I got to say is woof. <laughs> so they suck. So at mapping, that is. Um, and why do I have to spend seven, six, seven grand on a P1 camera that I could do a better job with the Inspire 2 and save myself, you know, let's see, 13 and 7, so you're at 20. I'd save myself about $14,000, you know, just use the i2, X7. Yeah, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Uh, if you know what you're doing, there's it, really not much more to be said about that. Yeah. As one of the students from the experience training said, it's not the tool that you use, but rather how you use it. It's very true. It, yeah, that that's uh, a lot of truth covering a lot of different concepts. Which we will let you use your imagination Absolutely. for said concepts. But let's get to today's question. <laughs> Uh, Today's question is brought to you by our Props Public Safety Program. As many of you know, we started the Props Educational Platform to service teams of pilots, departments, organizations, drone programs. You can manage all sorts of different trainings for various verticals, but create systems of communication, systems of equipment management, and systems that, well, drive all of your drone operations. This way, your personnel can do everything from taking pretty photos to actually mapping, but it also makes it easy and seamless to manage all these moving parts of your drone program. We know with all the various ways that drone programs can fail, Well, drone managers and program managers need as many tools as they can in one place to make it easy and convenient to get their birds up in the air, providing data, saving that company money, or even making the company money. Well, now it's time to help and aid service members, the people who risk their lives for you, no matter what your political ideology is. These are the people that literally will run into a burning building just to make sure that little kitty has another day to live. (laughs) That said, if... It is time to not only help save lives of civilians with public safety drones, but also save the lives of service members as a whole. We worked with two firemen, some of the most experienced firemen in one of the densest urban environments in the entire country, to develop a new comprehensive training program to help fire EMS and public safety as a whole Learn how to best use drones and how to get the most out of them to help them save service members' lives, like finding hot spots on a second alarm, to gaining information and insights on how to move, well, various emergency vehicles logistically to an emergency area, or even create rapid orthomosaics to make logistics and management easy and simple 
or even sending drones in to conduct hazmat operations instead of, again, risking the lives of service members. If you're like me and you love to support public safety, then you've got to check out the Props Public Safety Program. Go to Props flightschool.com and then click on the public safety tab to learn more. We've got a webinar coming up where you can learn more and get a, well, behind the curtain scenes or behind the scenes view of this entire program that has taken us multiple years to put together. So join us, check it out, propsflightschool.com. Hey, Paul and Rob, Tom, again, another question and observation for you. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of people discussing hand catching and launching different, uh, drone platforms from the Inspire, Mavic, Phantom. Personally, I usually hand catch a Phantom if there's any wind just because I find that easier and I don't use, you know, usually want to risk the drone on a bad landing there. But I am seeing a lot of misinformation on the Mavics. I'm seeing a lot of people debating whether or not you can catch a Mavic, land it, and then how do you turn it off? Do you use a controller? Is there anything else you can do? Can you flip it upside down, see if it turns off? Personally, I've run into a few times where I've had to... Uh, and catch a Mavic just because it decides it doesn't want to land or it glitches out on a uh, zone that has some sort of limitation in it and it won't land and I can only go up and down, can't go left and right. And for some reason that drone gets stuck uh, right above a roof that I'm not on at the moment. So yeah, just wondering if, uh, get your thoughts on that and love to hear. Thanks again. Thanks, Tom. I always love your detailed questions and uh, just always kind of thinking about new things, which is pretty cool. Um, a lot of reasons to hand catch Mm -hmm. definitely seems like something where you better not let your guard down. This is true. I mean, that could be painful. Uh, we don't get too comfortable. We have seen people cut their fingers for sure. Oh yeah. Um, and one thing I will say is there's a lot of confusion and rightfully so on, uh, the whole 90 degree rule. So when you hand catch, Um, and let's say you hand catch a phantom and you turn it past 90 degrees, it's supposed to shut off the motors, but it's firmware dependent and it's firmware dependent on the Mavics as well. So you do see people hand catch and then turn their drone almost 180 degrees to get the motors to turn off. Right. And sometimes it doesn't turn off. That's because of whatever firmware edition that drone is on. Makes sense. Now, that said, uh, hand catching is something I do all the time. Again, windy days, flying from a boat, flying from a moving object. Yeah, phantoms especially, they have lots of tip overs on windy days. So I hand catch them all the time. And they're they're nice because they're pretty simple to hand catch. They are. And it's actually pretty simple to hand catch uh, in general. All that we do is we put our remote in our left hand. We've got our left thumb on the uh, elevation stick, we essentially, you know, uh, get the drone so that it's not moving whatsoever, grab the legs, move your thumb, your left thumb, down on the elevation stick for three seconds. That shuts the motors off. Um, That's true for the Mavic as well, right? That is true for the Mavic as well. But I will say one thing I really don't like about these newer drones DJI has been putting out, the Air 2, Air 2S, uh, Mavic, or Mini 3 Pro, uh, Mavic Mini 2, all of these drones have this feature that you cannot turn off. Uh, It's called landing protection. Mm. And so what landing protection does is that when you're about to land, it changes the gains or the sensitivity on Mm -hmm. the sticks to slow the drone down as it descends onto the ground. Hand catching becomes very difficult when you uh, when you're at that point. And I wish that I could just turn that feature off because I hate that feature as a whole anyway. And don't the sensors get in the way? I mean, the obstacle avoidance of Uh, hand catching as well? If you don't get your hand in there at just the right time, the sensors read your hand and then it elevates. Right. Yeah. That's frustrating. It's so frustrating. It's really frustrating when you've got a battery or a battery voltage error and you're trying to land the damn drone and it's like sitting there, you know, bouncing around like a freaking basketball and you're like, just land. (laughs) So, uh, (laughs) So let's, what are some things that you would not have? hand catch or Uh, not recommend hand catching let's not talk about you specifically but not recommend hand catching i mean take an inspire too those are heavy drones that is a drone that uh yeah it is a very heavy drone whenever you are hand catching a drone the position of your hand is quintessential so mavic 2 pro you know you're trying to grab just the back portion of the body below the props if you move your fingers too far up, you cut your hands, Mm -hmm. right? On a Phantom, you're grabbing the legs, but you want to put your thumb on the back of the hull to kind of balance the drone. Because if you have all of your weight or all of your, uh, 
uh, articulation force on the legs, you'll break the legs and the antennas that are in the legs. When it comes to Inspire 2, you know, you have to grab below the two batteries. Okay. And that takes a lot of uh, of gusto to have, like, strong forearms. So Tom Powers, who uh, asked the question, as a fellow lacrosse player, he knows what I mean. But you got to have the right wrist strength in order to yeah, do that. Yeah. And the Inspire 2 actually recognizes a hand catch because the gear automatically comes down. Really? Uh-huh, yeah. Interesting. But you, what about catching it? Like if you've got somebody with you, they catch it from the rails. So I've seen where they put the landing gear down and someone will grab like the rear right arm and the front left arm or, or vice versa mm-hmm. um, in landing. I have seen that a lot. Um, I've also seen people land an M600 by grabbing the two legs, you know, uh, yeah. and landing that way. And hand catches do really help. You think of like, you know, filming a... Uh, PJ's job at Pike's Peak, there's very few flat places to land. And True. hand catching is like your only option, you know? So it is something that is a powerful tool in a drone pilot's uh, toolbox. If you are conducting a, la- a hand catch, check your settings before you take off. See if landing protection is on, you know, uh, check your firmware because a lot of people who do, uh, you know, land or hand catch a, a, a Mavic, do tip it over to turn the props off. They think that's faster. Honestly, I think it's better to just set up the system of practicing your hand catches with your right hand. Your left hand is on the remote, left thumb is down for three seconds to turn it off. Yeah. It has to be straight down. Okay, any articulation of yaw m- does not inject the motors turning off. Which can also be frustrating. Yeah, we had a student. But it almost- needs to be that way. It does, yeah. We had a student almost uh, crash uh, at the experience training because of exactly that. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know, especially I would say 40 and plus, if you're not used to flying consistently, you'll think that you're elevating or descending, but your your thumb doesn't make a perfect linear motion. It kind of makes like a curvature of a motion, and you get that yaw pattern and whatnot. Did Look, you just you- call out people that are over 40 years old? Is that what that was about? Look, I'm under 40, and I still have a lot of things to learn, Rob. So, look, we all have uh, pros and cons, okay? Age is just a variable. <laughs> well, I feel 18, so. That's good. Except not after my run today. That was bad. That was, that was not good. Anyway, well, This is a good example, Rob, of uh, how age is not a variable because I am fat and overweight and probably could not run – of two miles to save my life, whereas here you are over the hill and you run, you know, six minute miles. So no, 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 so, no I don't. So no, how, I don't. how much does age really matter? <laughs> you know, yeah, true, uh, that's true. But anyways, um, there are multiple reasons to practice hand catching and and making sure that it's something that even if you're not comfortable with it, there are, if you fly enough, there are probably going to be situations where you need to do it. A hundred percent. So you need to be prepared to do it. And if you're flying in an urban environment and you took off from a parking structure, you know, you're going to get all that mag interference when you land low. So you want to hand catch. There's Mm -hmm. so many environments that hand catching makes sense. So what are the detractors from hand catching saying that, I mean, it's basically that you're going to get hurt. It's dangerous. Yeah. You know, and and it it is dangerous, you know? Well, yeah, if you're not um, very, very careful and and deliberate with the process, like, don't mess around. Don't do it light. Don't take it lightly. A hundred percent. And you've got to be thinking multiple steps ahead. You've got to have a plan. Okay, I'm going to hand catch the drone. Are you going to put it in Addy and let the wind bring it to you? Are you going to leave it in GPS and just stay because you don't want to pull on the drone or move it either way? Otherwise, it won't turn off the motors. You know, are you going to make a system of, you know, descending for three seconds to kill the motors or try to do the flip? The flip doesn't always work, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm just warning you. Um, That said, I think, you know, when when you are taking systematic risk where you have a plan, Mm -hmm. you have a backup. Uh, you have reasons to learn this, I think it's acceptable. I think when it becomes dangerous is when people are not planning, they do things haphazardly, or they do it with emotion. Emotion can be you're frustrated, angry, annoyed. It can also be the flip side of emotion, overly positive, giddy, not paying attention. You're just flippant about it. Flippant. Whoa, what a great word. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, I totally see that. You do it enough times, and I mean, you have to guard against flippancy. Yes. I don't know if that's a word, but I think you know what I mean. It is a word. So let's make it a word. They add some of the, 
I mean, didn't they just add like woke to the dictionary or something? Like literally the, what Miriam Webster's dictionary has shown us that society creates words. And then once it's at a point of critical mass, they're like, OK, we're going to add that to the dictionary. So you know what? Flippancy. Add it. Take note. <laughs> I'd like to see it in there. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it might already be in there. <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you again for joining us. Uh, if you are a DroneU member, there's a couple of new classes. I really recommend that advanced aerial videography. Yes, it was shot with an Inspire 1, a little bit older. But there are so many great examples of various shots that you can get. Because as a quality drone pilot, you need to be able to articulate your camera and your drone in combination to showcase the most complex motion smoothly and successfully. This is going to land you the other jobs that other pilots really can't get. And it also allows you to showcase your skill without having to say a single word. You show instead of tell. Your work speaks for itself and your clients understand the difference. Check it out, thedroneu.com. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. 